One of the most magical experiences of my life was scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef. And we came upon a single coral colony that was 50 feet high. And we would dive around it and see the giant clams that were fused into the coral, all the fish that called this coral colony home. And it was really an amazing experience to be in the presence of such a creature that had been around for thousands of years and seen so much. And sadly, that's in the northern Great Barrier Reef where almost all the coral has died. It's likely that that coral didn't make it. Coral reefs are one of the cornerstone ecosystems that makes the ocean work. And scientists project that by 2050, over 90% of reefs will be dead. The fight to rescue a sunken treasure, the treasurous coral which protects our shores and even provides medicine. Scientists tell us that South Florida's coral reefs are now in rapid decay. Last year, two-thirds of the corals in the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef died, the worst die-off in history. Coral right, Vita, future shoot, Grand Bahama, take two. Man, I'm good. You could have had a louder snap there. I don't know if it's even going <laughs> to <have to> register. <laughs> Four or five years ago, we just had an idea in the back porch of grad school. So with my friend Gator, we started Coral Vita to bring reefs back to life and sustain them through climate change oceans. And the school gave us a thousand bucks, and really that's all the money we had at the time to try and flesh out this idea. It just so happened, as we're building out the plan, a New York Times article comes out that Dr. David Vaughn figured out this method to grow corals up to 50 times faster. We're here in Grand Bahama, where we just launched the world's first commercial land-based coral farm to restore dying reefs. So at Coral Vita, we're creating a new model of reef restoration where we can incorporate cutting-edge breakthroughs from different marine institutes around the world through a process known as assisted evolution, where we can closely control the conditions that the corals are growing in and also fragment them up into tiny pieces and fuse them back together. We can crank up the heat, crank up the acidity within our tanks, and then we can see which individual corals are naturally strongest so that each batch we're planting back into the reef is born of the corals that are most resilient against those warming ocean conditions. And we can repeat that process once they're big enough so that we can grow significant amounts of coral tissue and you can see the ecosystem really come back to life as soon as you put the corals back into the reef. There's a shifting baseline where we sort of accept destroyed ecosystems as the new normal. It's tragic to see all the life disappear. We lose 90% of reefs in the next 30 years, and that's not only uh, wrong, but it's also not fair to kids now and future generations because they're not gonna get to experience and enjoy the planet for what it once was and what it, what it should be. I think what we lack more than anything is, is willpower from our leaders in industry, in government, in the media. We know how to fix these problems. We just need to deploy the capital and the resources and the effort to make these changes. When I think about what the future can be, I envision a healthy planet, prosperous society, mind-blowing, beautiful, wondrous ocean life, and that's actually the future I still have faith in.